It will be made clear to us if we are looking for it. Amen. Amen. If we don't want to see it, we won't see it. That is why the numerous and many numbers of people will not see God in all of this. They will not see how God had been trying to get the attention of a world. I think if nothing else, let's get to the simplicity of it. God is trying to let the world know that they don't have the ability to stop everything. There are some things that confounds even the wisest of all. And it's the smallest thing of all. Amen. Why in the world, what I don't understand is why people don't have a problem finding the smallest things. But when you got the biggest thing that fills the universe right in front of you, you can't see it. Amen. God is revealed when we desire a clearness of meaning. Every view of God at one point has been or is darkened. Except to those who desire meaning. I'm going slow for a reason. I got plenty of note takers in here. And I want us to be able to take notes if we are. Because we're talking about obscure enlightenment. The ways of God is visible only if you desire to see clearly. Let's go a little farther. We see what we want to see. If we want to see God, we'll see God. If we want to see something else other than God, that's exactly what you'll see. God only reveals himself to those who want to see him. Amen. We can make reality fit our understanding and our knowledge. That's why we can't understand why some people, they seem or... Why is it that we always seem to think the people in the world are having more fun? Why? Because they work really hard to make their reality fit into their knowledge. So we can make reality fit our understanding, our knowledge. We can bend reality to fit our situation. Now, I've been serving God a long time. And I was fairly young when I walked into the church. I was 15 when I received the Holy Ghost. I had been to other churches. I had been other places. But in all actuality, I was fairly young. So, in essence, this is really all I know. Unless I want to take my first 15 years and create some kind of life from that. Some people say I haven't grown up. But I had a friend say I look old. You were a friend. <laughs> Just kidding. I am looking my age. I'm not saying that's old or young. I just look how I should look. Right. 
We can bend truth to fit in to our lie. That's why there are so many different people with so many different views of God. They see what they want to see. They believe their own lies. And they bend it to fit their narrative. Just like what's been going on around here, around the world, is this, this, this thing's been bent to fit a narrative. And we, they have bent it to make it out to be something worse than what it was. Right. Oh, people die. And I, I'm sorry about that, but people die every year from flu. Right. And they don't take that serious. And then the same people that have limited immune systems would be the same people that die from the regular flu. <coughs> way that it is. And so, be careful all the time. I also want us to understand something. For those of us who may not have understood virology, it took somebody to teach me this. Just something, a uh, little tidbit of information. Now, by no means am I an activist, but I do have my opinions. And that's exactly what I'm stressing. But do you have an idea? Let me, I, I should go around the room. Why do you think cold and flu season is in the winter? Because people have a tendency to say, because it's cold outside, right? Wrong. You know why it's more prevalent in the winter than it is any other time of the year? It's because in the winter time, People are locked up together. Yep. Yep. You can get the flu during the summer. You can get a cold during the summer. You can get those things. But they're more prevalent in the winter. Why? Because people aren't going outside as much. Right. <coughs> so the thing that spreads it is people being locked up together in the cold. Right. And the close proximity to each other. During the winter! Uh huh. So, what did we do? We locked everybody up! That's the truth. But we can bend it to fit our own reality. Amen. Isaiah said, there's coming a day when the deaf will hear and the blind will see. Yeah. Amen. Job experienced the worst life had to offer. Yes. Now, not a lot of preachers will preach about Job. And nobody will ever say, I want the patience of Job. Yes. Um, for good reason. Job experienced the worst life had to offer. He experienced loss. He experienced sickness unto death. He experienced failure. He experienced defeat. Hold it. First of all, I'm going to stop right here. You're not alone. You are in very good company if you're under the sound of my voice right now. He experienced loneliness. He experienced destruction. He experienced depression. He experienced evil. And he experienced emptiness. Amen. The deaf and blind world would determine Job had a reason to assume there is no God and that God doesn't care. I want us to understand here tonight, if not any other night, but tonight mainly that I want us to know that no matter what you're going through does not mean God doesn't care. 
And I want us also to understand something. God responds when we run after. I am with assurance in my mind knowing that being empty and lost is not because God has withdrawn himself. It's because you refuse to draw closer to him. It's not him, it's me. And if I want to see him or experience him, all I got to do is open my eyes and look for it. If I want to close my eyes and be blinded, I can do that. And I can walk around with blinders on and I can tell everybody God doesn't care. But that's not the truth. We can look at our situations and say, look what I'm going through. God doesn't care. I want us to understand something. Job went through that to show and to prove that God does care. Amen. Now you may not understand it, and I guarantee you Job didn't understand it. But Job refused to accept this reality. Yes. Amen. Amen. Job 13 and 15, Job says, yet will I trust in him. Amen. I can lose everything. I can be at the end of my life. I can be hanging on by a thread. But yet will I trust in him. Amen. Amen. But yet will I trust in him. Well, this is what makes Job a little bit different than us. Job says, but yet will I trust in him. Job's understanding of God was based on what he was told. I want proof. The world today always wants proof. And they always say, well, how in the world can you believe in something you can't see? Well, there's a little thing we just ran from for three months that we can't see. So don't tell me that we can't believe in stuff we can't see. Yes, amen. Well, like I said the other week in the other service, I don't have a problem seeing God and everything. Right. Why? Because I look for him. Amen. I can sense him. Amen. And even when I can't, I still know he's there. Amen. I don't need God to give me proof 24-7. Right. Amen. Job stood firm and he said, yeah, well, I trust in him. Trust in the God that he only heard of. Oh, oh 42 and 5 of Job. I have heard of thee. By the hearing of the ear. He was trusting in something he only heard of. Right. Why is it that we have got to have a proof or a reason why to serve God? Right. Why is it that we always demand that God proves himself? 
himself. And I can't serve him or follow after him until he does. I need God to do something miraculous in my life. And when he doesn't, then I waver. Well, let me tell you something. Whether you serve God is only ba based on your interaction with him. Mm -hmm. Let me point something out to you. How God interacts with you solely falls upon your shoulders on how you interact with him. Right. Right. We always put the weight and the, and the, and the burden on him. Right. But when we're running away, how do you expect him to act? Right. What do you expect him to do? So Job's understanding was based on what he was told. Life may be ugly, but I heard of a God who can make it beautiful. I've been told God loves me. I've been told God cares for me. I've been told God delivers. And I've been told God is a healer. Now based on that understanding, Job was found to be worthy of the challenge. Job, in his reality, could have ignored what he was told about God. You never told me anything. How many, how many people do you think are going to stand before the judge and say, I've never heard the truth? Right. I don't believe I heard that. Nobody told me that. What, what, a, what a good lie that we have come into, with, that people in the world have made easy to use. I wasn't told that. And how can anybody prove that you were or you weren't? Easy get out of jail free card. I wasn't told speeding was wrong. Oh, that's what that 55 means. I thought I was on Highway 55. Matter of fact, there is a highway I drive on it's called 155. That's the new speed limit. 155! <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> Ninety-four. God's strength to stand, or I'm sorry, Job's strength to stand came from hearing of God's ability. Ability to save. God's ability to heal. God's ability to lift up. God's ability to give victory. God's ability to be a friend. God's ability to build. God's ability to bring joy. God's ability to conquer evil. God's ability to fill voids. Job's strength to stand came from hearing of God's ability. Job survived because he held to what he heard. How shall they hear unless someone tells them? Job survived because he held to what he heard. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Through all of his experiences, 
he now sees God for who he is. What was once based upon hearing, now he sees with his eyes all that God can do. Job had to experience the ugly to see the beauty of God. Oh, folks, some of us in here tonight may be going through something in our lives. It may be something darker or deeper than what we've just been going through. Amen. We've been away from each other for three months. I may not have been able to or you may not have been able to hear from God or from your pastor or from something that was posted on Facebook for three months. But I want us to tell you, I want to tell you something. Even if you did it, those that are in here have heard enough before to form an opinion or a reality concerning God. Amen. Yeah. And if for some reason you have lost uh -huh. the senses of hearing yeah. and at some point have said, you know what? I don't remember what I was told. Right. I don't know if there's someone in here that's going through something different. But I want you to understand something. Even if you can't see God, you need to hold to what you've heard. Amen. Amen. Even if you can't see God doing anything, I can tell you with surety, if you heard that God is able, He is able. You can hold to what you've heard. But because Job held to what he had heard, he is now in a position to see. <laughs> what well, was once based upon hearing, now he sees with his eyes all that God can do. Job had to experience the ugly to see the beauty. There was a story, and it goes back to my childhood, and sometimes I like to share stories. Not too often, but I like to share stories. And there's a story of this little baby duckling who all his friends made fun of him because he was an ugly duck. He just didn't fit in. Right. Right. He walked funny. He walked differently. He looked different. He, 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 was, he, 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 he couldn't quack like all the other ducks. Right. He talked funny. Yeah. And all the ducks made fun of him. Because he didn't look like all of them. Right. He was different. He stood out. He couldn't hide amongst the population. Because he was different than all the other ducks. But as he grew older... Things started to change on him. And still, while the ducks still made fun of him, for good reason.
Because he didn't look like all the other ducks. And he even called himself ugly. Why am I so ugly? Because he believed what he was told that he was an ugly duck. But as he grew older, the truth came relevant, came, came to reveal itself to him. He was an ugly duck because he wasn't a duck. He was a beautiful swan. Folks, you can believe what people tell you, but if you don't walk like a duck, and if you don't quack like a duck, chances are you're not a duck. So yeah, call me an ugly duck. That's fine, because I'm not a duck. Sometimes in order to see the beauty, we have to experience the ugly. I, I am sorry to say that sometimes we forget what ugly is. And that's why sometimes we lose touch with reality. And I want us to understand something here tonight. When we leave these doors, the world is ugly. But the church is beautiful. That's why they can't intertwine because this is the church. If it worships like the church, if it sounds like the church, if it looks like the church, it's the church. Amen. Amen. And the world is not to be a part of it. Amen. The world is ugly. The world is dark. The world sees what they want. If it looks like the world, if it sounds like the world, if it yes. smells like the world, it's the world. Yes. And it doesn't belong in the church. Yes. Amen. But some of us in here have tried to walk the fence. And sometimes we obscure the reality within our mind that uh, we can interchange the two. Well, I want us to understand something here. You can't interchange the two. And no matter how hard the swine tries to fit in, it's never going to fit in. Why? Because he's not a duck. And there will always be something different about us. Why? Because we've experienced the beauty of God. What the devil tried to accomplish only strengthened Job's reality. I bet you, if I do enough to Job, that Job will turn his back on you. Yes. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Oh, but hold on. You can't protect him. He only serves you because you protect him. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's how you see your situation. Right. You can look at your situation and feel sorry for yourself. Where you can see God is trying to prove to the devil that I am able to serve and walk after God no matter what. I have experienced things with God way beyond the hearing only. I have seen God. And I think everybody in here, in their own way and in their own time, has seen God. Yeah. Well, I'm going to challenge you here tonight. Do not believe the lie that the world is prettier. You can laugh. You can slap lipstick on a goat and call it whatever you want. It's still a goat. I was trying to trying to remember the full quote from my dear friend. 
What the devil tried to accomplish only strengthened Job's reality of God. What is given or what is going on in our lives is through what is going on in our lives is that through the ugly God wants to be revealed. Sometimes all we have to cling to is what we hear. Right. When God is not seen is when we must hold on to what we have heard of God and His ability. Amen. When all is dark and ugly, we must rely on what we have heard. Amen. And through it, we will see the beauty of God. Amen. Amen. We will see the beauty of God. Amen. In Job 42, it goes on to say that Job had many sons and daughters after all of this. Call the name of the first Jemima. Name of the second Kezia. The name of the third Karen Hapa.